So um, I would say I got about like probably two hours of sleep the night before my delivery day. Um, I think I was just sick with fear. I was just terrified and I couldn't really move very well in my bed because I was hooked up to so many different um, monitors. I was on the magnesium drip again, which made me feel so sick. So I didn't get very much sleep, but I was woken up by one of my favorite nurses who said, today is the day you get to meet your son. And I just, I was, I was excited for the first time. I was feeling confident. I was just at peace with the situation because I knew I had to be but you know unfortunately everything changed very quickly why do I feel like that's like the theme of this story they made my favorite nurse and you know who you are if you're watching this they made my favorite nurse come in and deliver the news that was gut-wrenching basically she came in and she said I can't believe they're making me tell you this but the NICU is full there's no room for Riker um, she was like, they are going to deliver you here and send Riker across town via ambulance to the hospital across town and he is going to have to stay in the NICU there. Once again, I was like, am I living in a freaking nightmare? Like, what is going on? I was so mad. I think I was shocked at first because here's the thing. If I was delivering, even a 28 weeker, I was delivering a 25 weeker and they wanted to send him in an ambulance across town on the bumpy road. I was just, I was not having it. I was like, you know what? I have been more than kind. I've been more than, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Cooperative. I said some choice words. That I'm not gonna say but basically I said hell no I'm not doing that I said I'm not delivering my 25 week old baby here and you're not gonna separate us two you're not gonna send him across town absolutely not I said I either deliver him here or I can go to Mercy and deliver him there and I will deliver him there and he can stay there I was like you guys figure it out because I am not I'm not doing that. That's not an option. Like, no. <laughs> I was like freaking out. My stress level was so high. Either everything happens here or everything happens at Mercy. I'm not playing the game of like sending him off. She like left the room. She's like, I understand. I'm so sorry we're doing this to you. I wouldn't want to do that either. She's like, let's figure this out. And I said, okay, but it's either here or there. I'm not delivering until this is this is situated. So like time passed and I was just like on edge. Finally, my OB came in who is like, like I said, my regular OB is super relaxed, super amazing. He's like, I am so sorry about that. He was like, I don't know what, what communication happened with the NICU, but he was like, we were able to get an older baby that's getting ready to leave up in Pete, like move them up to Peds. And he was like, there's 100% a spot for Riker in the NICU. He was like, you're not gonna have to go to Mercy. Like let's, you know, where everything is happening here. So, um, which I was really glad about, but I, I don't know. I just made me start the day off. Not so great. I don't know. What do you guys think? Was I overreacting? I felt so strongly about it and I was just not gonna let that one go. I was, I was sticking to my guns. Time was passing. They were prepping me for delivery and <laughs> the high risk OB came in, which is the one that I was talking about before. It was like, yes. There's a 90% chance your baby's gonna die, like all this stuff. Like, I feel like I didn't even cover the surface of like the crap I had to deal with with this guy. Every single day, he would wake me up at 7 a.m. looking over my bed and like, do you have any questions? And I would ask him a question and be like, doom and gloom, like your baby's gonna die. And so I'm like, I'm just, I'm done asking questions. Like, I'm just, I'm done. Anyways, so I am literally, literally being wheeled out of my room to go to my c-section he stops the bed and he just stopped me and he goes i just want you to be prepared it's a very high risk that your baby is going to have special needs there's a very high risk of him having a brain bleed and there's a very high risk of, ha of him having cerebral palsy and i'm just looking at him like okay like i'm getting ready to deliver my baby like i don't want to hear this right now like i am trying to be like super positive and i just feel like like get out of my face <laughs> uh. <laughs> and this is kind of what i was talking about at the beginning like things were just like ridiculous 
<laughs> in that moment I was just like I'm done you know whatever happens with Riker I am trying to be mentally prepared for this I'm trying to stay positive and I just felt like why would he do that like someone please tell me why we get into the operating room Austin had to stay behind so I was by myself and um, they gave me the spinal tap every time I think of you know delivering your baby I just think of like a warm dark you know relaxed room this was the exact opposite it was so bright and cold and just a very eerie energy in the room I truly think that um, I think my c-section has truly given me PTSD and I think I'm like over it now but I think this is, is really hard to talk about I've never been so scared in my whole life um, Austin came in like 30 minutes later and I think like no one really said a word we were just so terrified I was sick the whole time I couldn't stop throwing up and they were, they were like, why is she throwing up so much? I think I was just so terrified. I was sick with fear. I don't know what, like I just, I didn't realize there'd be so many people in the room and like so many people working on me and my OB, um, I think he tried to talk to me. I think I just kind of blacked out most of the time and I think he gave me like cues of like what he was doing. I don't really know. Um, I just remember everything was all fine at first and um, he was kind of joking. I could hear him like I could hear him talking to the other doctors or assistant like joking and I could hear their like little conversation and make out what they were saying but um I knew when things weren't going so well and I, he just uh, he quit talking and I kept asking Austin like is what's going on what what's happening and Austin's like I, I don't know I was like is Riker like did he deliver him yet like what's going on and, and I was like is he alive is he alive like what what's happening we just like didn't really know what was going on and until dr weiss was like i'm i'm having trouble then i was like oh my gosh and then what seemed like an eternity passed i don't know really how long it was and they warned us beforehand just to, like give you a background they're like you know when we deliver your baby at 25 weeks they probably won't make any sound they probably won't cry um so just be prepared they they told us beforehand and uh, when Riker was finally delivered, um, we knew we knew he was delivered because he let out the cutest cry, and I will never forget it. And it was like a sign. I felt like, and I I truly felt like it gave us some hope. And Austin and I looked at each other, and, and we just started bawling because that's all that's all we could have asked for was to hear his little cry. The NICU team took over and they shoved the tube down his throat and I'll insert some pictures here and um I tried to look over to see him and there was no way because there's the whole NICU team was surrounding him which like they warned me about that too and no, there's nothing I so they um, told Austin to come look at him so Austin did and like is he cute and he's like yeah he's cute and like in my mind I was like what does he look like you know I had just delivered my baby and I didn't even get to see him so it's hard um, we obviously had to stay in um, in the operating room and they stitched me back up and it took felt what well, it felt like forever and I was just so exhausted by the end of it and I talked to my doctor afterwards and I was like what what happened like what took so long and he's like usually it takes me like 20 30 seconds to get a baby out after everything is sliced open and he was like it took me two and a half minutes to get him out he said he was just wedged so far down and I carried Riker like super low so it made sense to me and he said he did not want to come out he said he was fighting which kind of gave me a little bit of hope that you know Riker's a fighter but um, and then I asked him what my placenta looked like he told me that my placenta looked like it had been attacked by moths and, and I was super confused by that um, but all the nutrients were um, sucked out of my placenta and he said that Riker would have been a stillborn and I probably would have either had a stroke and passed away or at the very very least I would be um, on kidney dialysis um, if I wouldn't have come in. So it's just crazy. A uh, Riker's crying, so I'm gonna go grab him. <laughs> We've got our miracle baby. So yeah, Riker was born 
um, at one pound 13 ounces at 25 weeks on the day and um, he's our miracle baby for sure <gasps> did you have good nappies did you have good nappies but I do have to say that the nurses were so amazing to me um, during my delivery they held my hand they um, took photos for us. They were just incredible. The next part of the story is still craziness. So thank you guys for watching. He was born with a collapsed lung just from the trauma from birth. And we're so surprised that he survived that because most micropremies do not. That was super incredible. I don't think we were truly prepared for what was to come with Riker. Really, those first couple days, it felt like we were taking everything hour by hour. It was excruciating. He got down to a pound six ounces. So they call it like anything that bad happens in the NICU. Yeah. They called those things events. And every time I would walk into his room in the NICU, I, I truly felt like I was going to either pass out or throw up everywhere because I was just I was so emotional. Of course, I was recovering from my C-section and I also swear that like so many people recognize me They're like, oh my gosh, you filmed my brother's wedding or or oh you shot my wedding and all this stuff And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like this is the most embarrassing thing I was just a mess. I was a mess for all of it I was recovering obviously from the preeclampsia in the C-section and it was just it's so interesting but um <laughs> Rick's just having a good old time. Hey, buds. <laughs> Luckily, they're able to put in a chest tube and um, they're able to fix his collapsed lung, um, which was truly a miracle. Um, and then I feel like it was maybe the second day. I don't know. Time really didn't make sense to me. But um, they had to do an echo on his heart and he just flipped out. His oxygen levels were just all over the place and things got really bad. It's easier to talk about this whenever he's being cute over here. So you guys know that this story has a happy ending, so spoiler alert. Riker's oxygen actually dropped down to 7% and um, <laughs> I just can't do this while he's laughing. <laughs> um, you are so cute. I love you. <laughs> Are you so happy? Hi. <laughs> Can you say hi? Hi. His oxygen level dropped down to 7%. Um, he just like totally freaked out. I think that they thought that they were going to lose him. So they called me. The, like the timing of this whole thing was just like a mess. So Austin's grandma and uncle were there to see Riker for the first time. We said guests were welcome. Just family. Very, very close friends. But we wanted to make sure it was like in small groups. Every hour was just so unpredictable. So I was upstairs. Actually, the nurse was taking my blood pressure. And Austin was down getting his uncle and grandma and I got a call in my room and I knew I knew like if, if that happened it wasn't it was not a good thing she was like well we need you and Austin to come down immediately we need you right now and so I was like great this is not good I didn't realize that my parents had, were already down there and saw the craziness go down so they came up to get me just to kind of keep me calm I didn't know that they had already seen everything I was trying to like keep it cool but I was freaking out on the inside but I went down and and there were like 20 people in his room working on him um, they were changing ventilators because his little body just could not handle the like the regular ven ventilator I forget what it's like the Drager I think I couldn't even get into his room because there were so many people in there um, so I just stayed like behind the glass in the hallway and just kind of watched everything. The psychologist came and, and stayed by me and we just basically felt very helpless. We watched them work on Riker and said silent prayers that everything was going to work out. And luckily they had an amazing team and they knew exactly what to do. Hoped that 
it worked for him. It's just, I think I just felt so guilty in my heart. And I was still recovering from bed rest. I had no muscle. Um, I could barely walk. They, I could barely stand for that matter. And once they got Riker kind of stable, they, they uh, had us come in and had us do some containment holding, which is basically like you can't just stroke a micropremia at one pound. So you hold like their head and their feet and you just stay there. And I just couldn't, I couldn't even stand. I felt like I was going to pass out. So luckily Austin took over and he was so amazing. He was talking to Riker the whole time and I don't know. I felt like I couldn't really connect to him because I just felt like I couldn't get too attached like things were just not gonna work out and um oh, i guess i didn't really talk about the first time i had seen Riker either um I, we got to see Riker like two hours after he was delivered and um i don't really i don't remember anything austin took some videos so that was so nice i felt like i had to keep a wall up because i, I truly felt like i could not get attached to this baby it was hard to connect but i didn't feel like he was mine i i don't know like it just felt weird because I've always known people of just, um... Oh, hold on. You need to do some tummy time? Yeah. I just, you know, other people immediately get to hold their baby after they're born and, and I didn't, I didn't get that. Um, I got to touch him a couple of times. He was so critical that they just did not want, um any stress on him at all so we would literally we had we would have to whisper in his room we couldn't even talk in like normal normal voices anytime um i touched him i always had to ask for permission and um it's just hard it's hard to connect it's hard to connect with your baby when you can barely even touch them or talk to them so and then i want to say a couple days later Riker had an event where um he had a pulmonary lung hemorrhage and his lungs filled up with blood and luckily once again this kid is just like such a fighter he's born with a collapsed lung his oxygen level got down to seven percent his lungs lungs filled up with blood somehow they were able to suction all of that out and then um, a couple days later he had like a series of seizures his poor tongue was so swollen that he couldn't like it was just like sticking out of his mouth and ultimately Riker's PDA wouldn't close as well and so that was a problem he was so fragile that they didn't want to give him was it ibuprofen or Tylenol I forget they didn't want to give him ibuprofen without having a surgeon on hand because that's very hard on a tiny little body there was a risk for a hole forming in his liver or colon and if that were to happen he would um, he would die very quickly so they uh, made the decision to send us to St. Louis to Cardinal Glennon and we were under the impression that yeah, we were under the impression that we would be back to Springfield in like a week or two. It was really hard. When we got to St. Louis, they told us, no, you are not leaving until your due date. I was like, that's not until July 26th and it's April. So long story short, just to wrap this up. <laughs> We ended up having to live in St. Louis for four months, um, which was so challenging, but yet so rewarding. When we got to St. Louis, Riker was still so critical. He was on 100% oxygen support um, and still satting like in the 80s. We knew his little personality and like how feisty he was and like such a fighter that we had hoped that he would make it through. But once again, like you just don't know. Anything can happen so quickly. If it weren't for the nurses and doctors and Ronald McDonald House, like they took such good care of us. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. You just talking to me? Obviously being in a city without friends or family when your baby's in the hospital is so hard. They took very, very good care of us. And um, we had um, some some very hard times in St. Louis, but also some incredible times. It was just such a learning opportunity um, for Austin and I. Like, all we had was each other, and we didn't have anyone else, like family-wise, which I think was actually good for us in the long run. Of course, it was hard. Austin had to go back to work eventually, but, you know, every day was like, 
an accomplishment. Okay, okay, okay. And Riker kept growing big and strong and and uh Oh, oh, oh. And we absolutely fell in love with his nurses. They were the most amazing. And and the nurses at Cox too in Springfield. I'm still in contact with them as well. And I just can't wait to see our nurses again. Um, after RSV season and flu season's over, we are going to St. Louis to see our nurses. And it was a crazy, crazy journey. We've had a lot of scares. We've almost lost Riker way too many times than what feels comfortable. I can say now that I'm so grateful for this process and like, I, I don't know if I'd have it any other way. Like, I feel like I've learned so much about myself and Austin and I have really grown as a couple and just always remembering we're on each other's team and I think just like, having such an amazing appreciation for the medical field, nurses and doctors. They saved my life and they saved Riker's life. So I will always support the medical field and, and what they do. And I don't want to say I'm, um, I'm a little bit more grateful than other moms, but I, I do feel like there is a level of, like, I, I don't take motherhood for granted now and even when he's fussy and crying like i just don't even care i'm so so grateful for riker and i ah, you're so big and strong you're so big and strong yeah but um i'm so grateful for everything and thank you to everyone who's helped us through this journey and ow, 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 ow. okay <laughs> i'm gonna wrap this up i hope that this series um helps anyone out who has questions or um just kind of feels like they can relate to my story but um i hope that it wasn't like too much for you guys <laughs> it's just a lot it's a lot of info and so many different parts of the story i know i know i know i know but uh, i'm sure as like time goes on i'll kind of talk about things more also i i want to do a q a with austin about it <coughs> So if you guys do have any questions, um, please let me know because we'll, we'll probably do a Q and A about um, our our NICU experience and everything. So I'm gonna get this boy some food, but <laughs> I just want to say thank you guys for watching so much. Um, I'm grateful for this little man, and thank you guys for watching. Bye. I know. We're mad. We're so mad. Hi, hey.